I V M. Hello, welcome to Football Twaddle. My name is Saru. Yes. Hello. Are you done with the excitement of the last weekend? No, I'm still feeling the excitement after uh, Liverpool failed to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Can we start with a positive note? Of course. <laughs> Manchester City. Yes. Four titles in five years. Yeah, it's a good achievement. Put Pep up there. <laughs> up where? <laughs> As one of the better managers in the Premier League. <laughs> oh, that way. Acha, but we need to talk about the drama which yes. happened. So at half time. Mm-hmm. City were trailing 1-0. Yep. And I think Liverpool were drawing 1-0. Yeah. And then City till 75th minute were 2-0 down. Mm-hmm. Did you think in the 75th minute that they're going to pull it off? No. So, I I was hoping and praying that Wolves managed to hold uh, Liverpool. And I watched a little bit of the Wolves-Liverpool game and Wolves had missed a bunch of chances. I hoped that they... Managed to get another one in or something of that sort happens. Man. oh, Because yeah. as you know, I mean, we I mentioned in last week's podcast, then ideal end would be both of them uh, <laughs> messing up and City winning. That didn't happen, but fair enough. This is the second uh, best outcome that I would have hoped for. Man, but the drama was too much. I, I yeah. didn't realize or I don't, I don't even know if this actually happened. Mm-hmm. But did this actually happen on the... on? In Anfield, right. where the crowd basically sc- mm-hmm. screams in joy that it becomes three all. Yeah, absolutely. It is ca- captured very well on camera, and uh, the players, the Liverpool players, the camera panned on to them, and they were asking around, and all of them were t- telling each other, "Nay, nay, no, it, they haven't scored a third one," and they, in fact, even turned around and asked the crowd to relax. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was one more epic now meme, which yeah, is that yeah, after yeah. Salah scored, <laughs> yeah, th- he goes to the crowd and some guy at the crowd says it's 3-2. Three, three, two, two. Three, two. Yeah, that, that's an epic meme, dude. Yeah. That's going to be around. That guy way. must be a Chelsea fan. hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. <laughs> Why? Why? Like, you are a Liverpool crowd. Right. Just celebrate the damn 3-1 goal. Now, what are you trying to tell Salah it's 3-2? Like, what can he do? Nothing. Exactly. <laughs> so, in that scenario, even if, you, if Liverpool scored like 10 goals in those 5 minutes, nothing was going to happen. Exactly, yeah. right? So, it's either a Chelsea fan or an Everton maybe, fan. Maybe he was trying to avoid the their celebrations becoming a meme. meme. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> please don't celebrate. Please don't celebrate. <laughs> but somehow, all this ends right. and City win the league again. Yes. What's going to stop this team? I don't, I don't know. I genuinely have no idea. Three words. Two words, sorry. <laughs> what? Newcastle United. <laughs> that will take three years, <laughs> at least. In my dream yeah. for Newcastle, we yeah, reach yeah, the conference yeah. next season. Yes. And the Europa the season after. Mm. Then we do top four. Uske baad. So, it's a four-year project. Yeah. Be that as it may. With Jose um, Mourinho as manager. <laughs> <laughs> They'll win the Premier League. Yeah. But on, on a serious note, I, I think uh, at least next season, City will take it once again. Okay. How big is Manchester City's fan base? Because I have seen very disparaging no, then, comments then, <laughs> on Twitter. No, but the, the, the pre-teens who must have become fans back in the day must be maturing. and So they don't you know? even come for the bus parade because they're so used to it? <laughs> no, no. I'm, I, I thought you were talking about the global fan base. No, not global. In Ma- Manchester, it's fine. I mean, whatever. So why? Or is it true that they were not present for the bus parade or whatever? No, I'm sure the, the old fans who are fans since the time they were in the second division and their kids <laughs> must have turned up. Man, the photo I saw, Umesh uh-huh. Dosa point in Bangalore has way more people <laughs> than that. Yeah, man, you're comparing like a country with a billion people to like a little island. So. To a legendary Dosa shop. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So, I mean, come on. India is India. Okay. So, in all this, mm-hmm. Ferguson right. begrudgingly gives the manager mm-hmm. of the year award to Jürgen Klopp. Do you agree with the assessment of whoever the authorities may I, be? I think the uh, the wins in the FA Cup and uh, the uh, the League Cup and the fact that they're in the Champions League really has coloured this decision. Was this the manager of the year for the Premier League? LMA manager well, uh, yeah, of the so, year. So, uh, so when I think uh, the other competitions has coloured this and uh, one cannot deny the fact that compared to the boundless, uh, boundless resources that Man City have... Klopp has done a good job this year. But I it would have been better if they selected someone lower down the league. Someone like Patrick Vieira. For what? For, For being... showing audience their place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what a brilliant end to the, the season that was there. Yeah, but talking about Guardiola actually. Mm-hmm. 
now winning the league also won't get him the manager of the year award no i i feel if he won it with like you know 10 points or so then the choice would have been easier okay why was our eddie how not the manager of the season because he was not there for the entire season i think i think brucey hit into his uh, <laughs> oh damn it <laughs> otherwise we, that, that, there would have been a parade in newcastle <laughs> with that with award, that award yeah. <laughs> uh let's go through a few more right. housekeeping things mm-hmm. hyung ming son and mo salah mm-hmm. end up as top scorers yeah and spurs fans are like you know mm-hmm. it he's done it without penalties so he should actually get the award yeah maybe th- th- that would be a good change to the criterion i feel i mean although i i do feel that scoring a penalty is uh, not like a done deal it's not easy we've yeah, seen yeah i know i mean we've seen But, john terry uh, take them <laughs> <laughs> so exactly so uh, th- there was this very funny clip going around from the uh, Uh, who are they playing? Norwich. Norwich versus Tottenham where Eric Dyer goes up to Krul and says, what is Salah paying you? Because he pulled off a couple of amazing saves from Son. <laughs> Did he save that? Eric Dyer is funny, yeah. man. Yeah. I mean, that guy went and attacked players also <laughs> in the stands. He, he, he's yeah. a very good character to be. <laughs> yeah, but eventually, I mean, the goal that Salah scored... Uh, I mean, honestly, it, may, maybe if the header went in before that little tap in that he had, then maybe Son would have had it on his own. Okay. Yeah, but then at that point, it really doesn't matter. It but doesn't matter, but it's it's a good thing that uh, they're they're giving the shared awards rather than you know other metrics like isne assist jada diya. So Do people gets. in South Korea know the award was shared? Did you see the crowd? But doesn't matter. It, it, it really doesn't matter, man. I mean, this is it, it's not like a trophy that is being shared. It's just a. individual achievement which is fine okay what else happened on the last day mm. burnley but yeah we say bye bye to burnley last week you said burnley going down is not a story and you hope they don't go down and you wanted yeah so uh, it's it's again it's not an interesting story anymore and i i'm sure a lot of big teams would you know would would be happy to see the back of them because their turf moor is a difficult place to go and all that so yeah so now with leeds staying up do you think we'll have more mm-hmm. ted lasso's managing in relegation battles in premier league no <laughs> you never know i mean <laughs> come on it just burnley went down because they were worse and yeah. <laughs> on, you don't want more american coaches no i mean come on there's this story uh, i mean Unfortunately, I have to talk about Manchester United, where uh, because of Brexit, uh, <laughs> our manager was not able to get the coaches, and that's why he had to get an American in. Oh, that's why Ragnik got an American. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. So he wanted six coaches, and they got three. Uh, he got three at the end, uh, and uh, of course, so th- there's Red Bull. Uh, there's the Red Bull franchise in America, so one of them works there. So I don't know how, what the visa conditions and all in. Mm. UK are especially after Brexit, but it was easier to get that guy rather than some European who's done much better. Shit, that was the reason. Yeah, and and uh, this is from uh, Laurie Whitwell's piece in the yeah. Athletic. Okay, so I, even I I read the <laughs> same piece, but I read the different part of that piece right. where I I saw that there's a guy sitting in Moscow oh, or yeah, somewhere. Oh yeah, Kornata, some guy, but he's not even part of the staff. Ha, huh, he was doing it as a yeah, yeah, favor yeah. for Ragnik, yeah. and he used to go through, and Ragnik used to not give half time speech till he had spoken to him or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dude. That club, no, no. But I, see, from that piece, it's very clear that Ragnik uh, was not put in a very good situation. So he was doing the What best he can. he can from his resources. But one hilarious part of that speed, uh, that uh, piece was. Uh, The guy that they got from America, I think, uh, what's his name? He went and spoke to Fergie. Yeah, he went and spoke and f- <laughs> spoke to Fer- Fergie and told him how he had played for Toronto FC and Red Bull New York. And Fergie's reaction was like, you I don't need know. more than that. Yeah, here, it's, it's it's typical like some you know some recruiter that you go for a job interview or whatever and say, "Are I won an elocution competition in ten standard?" But if like, oh. no, but to look at the <laughs> flip side, they asked him to go and talk to Fergie. Yeah, right and he went and fergie would have asked what did you do <laughs> like i'm sure fergie doesn't know that he played for kansas city or whatever right yeah. so he would have told i've done this i've done that mm. and fergie was like yeah, yeah you need more than that <laughs> so the league's done and dusted yeah. spurs don't lose to norwich mm. so arsenal with the stupendous performance mm-hmm. finished fifth in fact they thrashed who did they thrash oh, god knows it's such an inconsequential game that uh, oh god oh, yeah, everton, everton was still, still hang on over so Like yeah, Everton. So Everton were done by last yeah. Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, that was the comeback, yeah. comeback of the season. Man, trailing two nil to Crystal Palace, and yes. then somehow, oh, Frank is <laughs> Frank is a legend. Yeah, and it it was fun to see uh, Richarlison's. 
<laughs> stuff on Re- social party media. Yes. with uh, Jimmy Carragher. Jimmy Carragher. <laughs> Jimmy Carragher. <laughs> Wait, but I think Jimmy Carragher took it on the right spirit. Yeah, what else is he supposed to do? He can't complain. Yeah, but he said, you know, in my playing days, if there was Twitter, I would yeah. have said the same thing to the pundits. Pretty so, much, yeah. Which I think he would have. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah this this is a healthy level of twitter discourse i am all for you know people saying shit on yes. tv and then players basically responding to yeah. them on twitter that yeah. that is so good yeah. okay so this is done ac milan won the mm. league timori yes the first chelsea player to <laughs> want <laughs> to win serie a is it after moving from chelsea to serie a i'm sure not many people have done but dude i doubt that sir i'm sure he was in the serie a team of the I'm season i'm sure as someone well. from chelsea went to juventus kudrado or one of those oh yeah yes yes i Sorry. mean they won 9 years in a row i'm sure they bought a kudrado <laughs> one kudrado yeah, only that, one that came to my mind anyway whatever but timori is like right. he's an amazing and did you see zlatan killed it man yes. that was but that, that's a given right i mean whenever zlatan gets to gloat he does it in such amazing style it's not really good for clubs like manchester city to win this league the same day as a big club in some other country <laughs> because then people will start putting contrasting photos of the celebrations uh, and they do not come out well on this mm. so this is done uh, there are few things did you see in some bulgarian league or some before mm-hmm. we talk about transfer sir i think mm-hmm. in the bulgarian league mm. a team which was in like the relegation position right they had a penalty in the 85th 86th oh, I didn't minute see this. the owner uh-huh. comes on the pitch to do what and tells the guy who is about to take the penalty you're not taking it this guy other guy is going to take it man the other guy takes the penalty misses it mm-hmm. and the team gets relegated amazing i I'm, i'm sure so you know who's going to pay the price in bulgaria for this the fans <laughs> no i'm sure the guy who did not take the penalty <laughs> he'll be kicked out of the club but it's so weird yeah. the owners when will premier league owners Dude, start they should, doing they this they should uh, investigate this for match fixing maybe the other guy the owner told the other guy to miss the penalty or some shit yeah but in bulgaria i don't think match fixing investigations go far okay this is like in greece remember once the owner was walking with a gun the <laughs> yeah. the olympiakos guy <laughs> he was walking with a gun in the Man. stadium so yeah all sorts of weird thing i am waiting for the day when And like you know the Premier mm. League owners just like screw this <laughs> we're just going to say you imagine like Sheikh Mansour or something uh-huh. coming and saying Pep no no Bernardo <laughs> <laughs> Sterling will take the penalty <laughs> that'll be so much fun okay f- bit of transfer news Kylian Mbappe after keeping everyone in suspense Damn. makes the most stupid decision in my opinion but to... he's 23 years old it's fine yeah that's the that's the age to be foolish as many Uh, life coaches tell Dude, us. it can't be about the money. Like, I mean, he was getting no, insane amount of money the, from the, both the sides. If the president of France calls you and says <laughs> to stay, I mean, what else are you going to do? So, this is what happened. I think we touched this upon a little on the last podcast. Yeah, yeah. That first, Leonardo was given mm-hmm. the job to keep Mbappe. Yes. He couldn't. After mm-hmm. some time, they said, screw it. Let Nasser El Khalifi do it. He mm-hmm. couldn't do it. Then the royal family of Qatar says... Wait. none of you guys are like really <laughs> up to this so they take matters into their own hands and obviously that's why macron is <laughs> calling them it's so weird for yeah. one mbappe to stay at a man we should see what uh, amount of uh, france's energy comes from <laughs> energy needs are total. supplied by <laughs> <laughs> qatar total <Yeah. laughs> but it's so weird so he's staying back you think it's a mm-hmm. good thing i mean you think it's the age to be too stupid things so uh. well in a way i mean the the positive spin on this is that you don't want uh, all the good players to be concentrated in one league or to one team so it's it's better if they're spread out in europe in like a few bunch of teams so this is fine but of course what is worrying here is that if uh, there's so yeah. much player power in one club then it's heading towards disaster because what all is which it going was, to be that club was already in disaster neymar mm. and mbappe control like everything no, but there now even uh, now even what 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 power does neymar have left after this i don't think so much ha huh, but he can still throw yeah, yeah tantrums okay tantrum he, he throws even right now that's not a big deal but uh, if if mbappe now decides no more neymar neymar get lost then he'll be gone by 2023 4 or whatever And what about Messi? He's the third. Me- mo- he's the third most important player in that team now. Is he though? I mean, he seems like such a chill out. I don't know, man. <laughs> Relax. Yeah. <laughs> Scoring eight goals. Seriously, I mean, he's just uh, he's like uh, in the uh, who was the American dream team? The white uh, the the basket great basketball Celtic basketball. Steve player. Kerr. No, 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 no. He was not. 
anyway that guy uh, was like the senior most and he was he was injured and stuff in the dream team of 1992 okay and but although the, the, the main players were magic johnson and michael jordan but Haan. that guy was there just to like you know i'm there like, moral whatever. support type yeah acha <laughs> that's how yeah. that's how messi is okay we should take a break right now after the break man this so much happened it's uh-huh. like like with life <laughs> so right. much good things should not happen in one week in football <laughs> it's just so hard to cover but we take a break after that our producer has sent me a list of transfer news mm. Unsurprisingly, twelve out of the fifteen things he sent is about Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and it looks like United is just buying Ajax. So, we Ooh. should talk about it after the break. Stay mm-hmm. tuned to Football Total. Don't you think that if everyone around you is getting smart, you better be smarter? Hey there, I'm the traveling professor Siddharth Deshmukh, and I'm back with season two of my podcast to make you smarter, smarter with Sid. What's this season's focus about? Well, it's about 10 minute nuggets that will make you stand out at work. It's time to go from smart to smarter. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday and become smarter with Sid. All right, welcome back to Football Total before transfer news. Yes. Yep. Chelsea has a new owner. Congratulations for keeping Arsenal out of the Champions League. <laughs> oh, yes, the only good thing this own new ownership has brought is this. But now Christensen is leaving, mm-hmm. SP is leaving, right. and looks like anyone who is on a free transfer is going to Barcelona because they are a bikari club. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so man, so mm. he has a lot of work to do. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Chelsea have a good coach and. I feel that you know Chelsea had gone a little bit stale, so did a fresh start might do them good. But at yeah. this point of time, as long as the owner backs them in the market, he will. I mean, he's bought the club for five point two billion dollars or right. something. So Roman bought it for one forty million, right? And he spent another billion and a half, mm-hmm. and he's still making a profit of at least two billion dollars. Mm. So. Yep. Man, football is a good investment. Yeah, yeah, I mean the football inflation has been crazy in the last two decades. Right? You have to just keep spending money on players so that <laughs> fans don't turn on you. But yeah. you will recoup all of that money oh, and more yeah. as long as there are richer people than you to. Yeah, buy because at that level, even if you make a five hundred million dollar profit, mm-hmm. like that's like four thousand. It's amazing. Right? Yeah. All right. So let's get to some news. We spoke about Barcelona. They are not done freeloading yet. Yeah. So Lewandowski only thinks about Barcelona. Supposedly, he only thinks about them. Only thinks about them. Between Barcelona and Polish player, everything is agreed. Mm-hmm. None of this, I don't know, is verified or not. But it looks like no. But it sounds like something Barca would do. It's a nice gig for Lewandowski, right? So why do they need a scout team in Barcelona? I can give them a list of all the free <laughs> free but transfers I, available. On, half, half the <laughs> half the players in the world are on a free. Exactly. Teams. So the great resignation is happening in football. All right. Uh, there's a very tough to pronounce guy to sure. buy and done, but the. last point is mm-hmm. him and bellingham are said to be for the next decade I, it's so confusing bellingham plays for dortmund dortmund yeah and this gravenberch 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 yeah who is he he's at ajax right he's the ajax midfielder and he's highly rated and he stuff he is also at ajax yeah will we see ajax next season But this happens to Ajax almost every two three years, right? That this Dele, is, Dele, Dele De Jong, when the big team got torn apart. Three. <laughs> no, but they even had uh, Ziyech was there. A bunch of so all of their good players get picked up because they're not a big European team, right? I mean, they have history and all that, but I mean, they're they're like they're like another Benfica where they produce all the great players and they eventually end up somewhere else. Okay, but more worrying thing about Chelsea, Chelsea could consider a move for Raheem Sterling, who has one year remaining on his <laughs> Man City contract. according to mat law and is yet to decide on his future right if they sell okay no but it's fine i mean i don't think any of the white players at chelsea are doing too well ziyech has been so blah, this is so. contingent on chelsea if they sell werner ziyech or and or pulisic one of them oh yeah and pulisic has been terrible it, it won't be a bad signing honestly short term raheem sterling it won't be a bad signing at all he doesn't score goals but it's okay i mean you have you buy someone who scores goals also then right oh. we bought not we they, <laughs> they bought they no. bought a lukaku but see lukaku maybe he's had a bad season i think he'll come good eventually for chelsea yeah he's good all right uh more bad news for you mm. mo sala says i'm staying next season for sure after all the mbappe shenanigans i was hoping real by by someone Salah. but i i i like mane more hopefully mane goes to Man, uh, but what's with Man City's luck? Because Real thought Mbappe was coming to them. Mm-hmm. Man City had a free ride to get Haaland in. 
Like if Mbappe had made this decision three weeks ago. Uh-huh. But see, Haaland is a apparently a childhood Man City fan, so maybe he would have chosen <laughs> them over. Uh, Who was his idol? Because I know his Luka, father. Lukaku <laughs> is not a Man City legend. He may not be a legend, but he okay. Like Stuart Pearce was his idol. What was it? God. Who was that Man City back? Then? Oh yeah, know. but Anelka. You know, we've grown so old. When we talk about Haaland's childhood, it mm-hmm. is just like yeah, just, six years yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Or, so maybe he's an Edin Dzeko fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dzeko is good, man. Yeah. So hence proved. Oh, all right. Some news about our club. Newcastle are interested in Atletico Madrid players Renan Lodi and Yannick Carrasco. Man. According to Marca, but Amazing. Marca is such a Real Madrid paper. They will say all crap <laughs> against the Atletico players. No, but it's, it's not. Uh, it's, I, it's not beyond. Uh, yeah, but I will not be happy with this. <laughs> you want better players? <laughs> no, with my continental supports, <laughs> oh. I need all my clubs to do right. well. Okay. I'm not like the Watford owners right. who keep moving players between their own clubs. <laughs> Okay, coming back to Premier League, Brighton scored three against West Ham United, mm-hmm. and that ensured United were in the top five. I mean, they had top to win. six. Yeah, they had to. Uh, I mean, West Ham had to lose. So. Otherwise, United would have played in the newly minted conference. Conference League. Or oh, yeah. Ten Hag would have won that for sure. Who knows? Or maybe he would have just played the under nineteen team in the leagues and got out. Yeah. All right. Soro Ganguly's big update. More Manchester United news no, coming in. That sounds like such... East Bengal in talks with Manchester United and others for ownership. I don't think... Uh, I don't think these guys would buy another football club, man. They barely are able to run one club. <laughs> it would be disastrous. <laughs> I don't know, but who are... This is like our dear friend Archie. He says his <laughs> favourite clubs are Chelsea... Newcastle and others. Yeah. <laughs> so, who is, who is East Bengal talking to Manchester United? Who knows? And I mean, they, maybe they're talking to Red Bull. A consortium of United, Chelsea and <laughs> <laughs> all of them. All right. Let's talk a lot about Manchester United. Okay. Eric Ten Hag. All right. Our producers, his glazers are buying East Bengal. So, that's another leveraged buyout coming in. <laughs> They will use but East who? Bengal's revenues <laughs> against them. What revenues? And where is this debt coming? Who's going to give them? Are they are they related to... If I remember right, three years ago when East Bengal were supposed to get into mm-hmm. ISL, they were supposed to put in a 50 lakh fee. They didn't have money for that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is just... Uh, I, I don't see this happening. Uh, or if it happens, I don't think it's good for either clubs. But think of it this way, no? Glazers can have 2 million dollars. 3 million. Come on. No, of course. I mean, the, the 2 million they can remove from Manchester United revenues like that. Yeah. It's just not very difficult for them and just put to do it, it. Put it in the 1.3 billion fan base. Yeah, okay. That way. Probably they don't know that they don't, you know what they would have thought. I'm like thinking this through now. They think if they buy East Bengal uh-huh. and they would have done market research, right. ki Kerala, Goa, mm. Bengal food, football fans, if we bought East Bengal, they'll buy original jerseys. Wow. <laughs> you know, there, there's this makes so much internal logic <laughs> when we discuss this. But, but I mean, having suffered the Glazer uh, ownership for like a decade and a half, I just feel bad for, well, <laughs> for East Bengal, Bengal fans. <laughs> All right. The last thing before we get to Eric Ten Hag. Barcelona president Laporta says on Neymar, who mm-hmm. doesn't love Neymar? Everyone. He's an exceptional player. Mm-hmm. But all these players to return to Barca one day should come for free. <laughs> when is his contract getting over? I don't think he's getting over like next year. <laughs> players who have signed for clubs like PSG have almost signed their slavery for money. So what Laporta's mm-hmm. solution is that you'd sign for slavery for no money <laughs> and come back to Barcelona. Who does this guy think of himself, man? I don't know. I mean, after the previous guy has uh, messed up the club so much and he was welcomed with such open arms, I, I think he's developed a Masaya complex <laughs> after <laughs> Barca finished second this time around. Yeah, he's living because peak people like Gerard Piquet in future, in like in really? lieu of future oh, that way. presidentship yeah, yeah, yeah. is giving up his salary I thought, I and thought, everything. I thought uh, it's it's all down to our friend Obama blood cloth. <laughs> oh, he, who, who he faded it. away. No, but it's okay. He had done his job. I mean, Barca just had to get into the Champions League and he scored enough to... Is he coming back to Arsenal? Why? I, 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 just new contract. <laughs> Dude, I don't think as long as Arteta is there, he's going to come anywhere to us. All right. Let's talk about Eric Ten Hag press conference. Right. I thought it was a decent press conference. But... but According to a uh, body mm-hmm. reading, mm-hmm. Uh, or oh, what? What do they call? What do you call that? Thing? Body language. Body language specialist. Mm-hmm. He appeared vague. Vague. <laughs> vague. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> compared to uh, entertainers like Van Hal and Mourinho, he's he he's he lacks that uh, charisma. Yeah, and stature. And stature. I mean, Manchester United fan, uh, sorry, players were keen for Pochettino to be the manager and not him. The players. Yeah. The so this this is another piece that I read somewhere. Maybe it's just made up that. Uh, they were keen on Pochettino coming in, and uh, the writer, I think it was Cal Anka, he mm. he mentioned that um, because Pochettino has a lot of charisma, which does not come through the TV to us. Like if you meet him in all these FIFA galas or in general, he has a lot of charisma. So he assumed that these players had met Pochettino and were charmed by him. And Ten Hag, he has, he has a lot of charisma. If the other nine managers were not there, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure pretty it, much. But Ten Hag, to me, also uh, comes across as more of a professorial kind of a person who is more method rather than uh, madness. Madness, yeah. Okay, so what is this I'm reading about Ajax being raided left, right, center? Yeah, but it, it's about time, right? United, given that Ajax produces so many great players, I think United have missed out on so many. Has I any- mean, Van Der Beek was bought in but not used properly or United were not missing players in that position. Before that, I think Daily Blind when... Uh, one he went back to LBG Ajax. was around and he... So yeah, so a lot of Ajax players have gone all over the world and done well. What? And now Ten, Ten Hag did wonders with those players at Ajax. It's just, it would be stupid not to buy Ajax players. So talking about, I, referring the Laurie Whithull piece mm-hmm. up on Ragnik. Right. So he said, you guys know Matic is leaving and he's uh, 33. Yeah. How is it that there's no planning <laughs> done? And people in the club said they had no answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. I mean, mismanagement is there. He also... Mentioned that, yeah, no, he, so it started with Matic is leaving. Why did you spend 90 million on uh, fringe on players? Fringe players like Van der Beek and uh, Ahmad Diallo and <laughs> Facundo Pellistri <laughs> rather than buying a replacement there. But yeah. I mean, we have been saying that as United uh, well wishers or supporters, <laughs> what do you want to call it? We've, we've been saying that for like two years now. So, do you actually think five, six people will come through United this season? Yeah, they have to simply because uh, four of them are out of contract and leaving. So, it's just, it just logical. To and make numbers at least. At least to make numbers to begin with, yeah. Okay. Among this news is that Tottenham mm-hmm. has issued shares worth $150 million mm-hmm. to Enoch. So, okay. Enoch is the guy yeah, who yeah, own them. Yeah, yeah. So, this is the first time after 2004 where they issued like $15 mm-hmm. million or something. They're issuing a share raise of $150 million. Right. It's interesting because... They are in the Champions League now. Mm-hmm. And Conte has like offered himself to PSG. <laughs> so probably Levy is like dangling this 150 million right. to Conte to get him to stay. Mm-hmm. Right? So assume that they have 100 million to spend. Right. If United don't move fast, they'll be in a situation where they're just mm-hmm. buying random players. Yeah. I mean, my biggest fear was, uh, I mean, if, if the old... Uh, the old guys like Woodward was still around and United would have bought Calbert Lewin and Calvin Phillips this <laughs> summer. I'm Calvin pers- Phillips is good. Dude, he's okay. I mean, yes, United need reinforcements there but they need like really good players. Not like Leeds United type players. Don't take Chris Smalling from Roma. <laughs> Please. He's, he's good. He's going to come back as a coach. Oh, I think he'll be a decent coach. Yeah. Okay, before we go, there are two more finals before the season finally mm-hmm. comes to the close. Right. We are recording this on a Wednesday. In a few hours, mm. my man Mourinho yes. is going to take on Feyenoord mm. in a yes. inaugural Conference League final. Yes. He's already said, we are not at the Champions League level. We are not even going to play Champions League. Mm-hmm. This is our Champions League. So, come mm. what may, we will try and yeah. win it. Yeah, yeah. And Tammy is gung-ho. Yeah, this seems like a slam dunk for him. He has so much experience in Europe and... Not in China, Conference uh, League. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, I mean... Uh, Feyenoord are what like the second or third best team in Holland and yeah I mean Roma have good players I I, I think this is going to be this is going to be I think similar to how he faced Ajax in with Manchester United in the Europa League where, that was such an easy final yeah it was a boring game it was an easy but final but it was a very easy final like yeah. Ajax didn't really have any chance These players that's were... because just they, they were just physically outplayed I, I think Roma have the same uh, minerals to <laughs> you know to physically bully Feyenoord and so take this if take I remember out. that game correct and I right. read this analysis somewhere mm-hmm. they found out that Ajax presses a lot in yeah, the midfield yeah. 
so you, Mourinho knew that smalling walling and all like won't be able to won't be it. able to deal with it so they like he screw the midfield <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they marwan po- <laughs> they they position marwan yeah. and before marwan i think pogba at the yeah. end of the midfield yeah. <laughs> and so ex players were just pressing and ball just <laughs> went up and he said within 3 minutes we knew <laughs> nothing's gonna happen nothing's yeah. gonna happen we're going to win this so yeah so uh, i i think it'll be a 3-1 Roma win. Mm. Anyway, and on Saturday night mm-hmm. is the big one. Yes. The Champions League final between Liverpool and Real Madrid. Man. And I on Twitter I am seeing how Jerzy Dudek walked or jumped walked ahead by like 7 <laughs> meters to save the right. penalty and to for win against AC Milan. Mm-hmm. But this is going to be a tough final. Yeah, absolutely because uh, both of them are European royalty and uh, Real have had an insane run to the final and they have had it easy in the last few weeks while Liverpool have to had had to fight and they have fitness issues and although Liverpool are better in almost every position it's just you uh, have a feeling Real will win yeah i do i do i have a decent Come feeling on, they can't do it again from the 91st minute no but maybe they'll do it before this <laughs> <laughs> that's all they've been doing Yeah but I I'm sure Carlo has seen uh, enough of uh, Liverpool's But what about Salah's tweet <laughs> that revenge is on <laughs> but it's okay I mean <laughs> what that, that's fine I I think pride goes before a fall as they say so oh. maybe, maybe the, <laughs> and uh, the one position where Real are better in a matchup against them is that right back position because right? uh, I I'm talking about the Liverpool right back where uh, Trent Alexander Arnold's defensive work is not world class no. and, and Vinny, one of my favorite players Vinicius Junior has been killing it there. Didn't so. he win the La Liga player of the year? Has he? Vinicius no, Junior. I, I didn't check. I, Or maybe he won the young player dude. What player of the year has to be Benzino or no I don't know. I don't know. In the league how uh, is it? What done? is the score line going to be in the Champions League final? 3-2 to Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. When will the last goal be scored of that game? 81st minute. Wow. So it's not going to go beyond 90. No, dude. There's there's going to be 15 minutes of squeaky bum time for for real for real. Fans. Oh. What about Luis Diaz? He may score. Yeah, he may score two. in the two in, in the, the two. two. <laughs> all right. The, he has because all your dreams <laughs> and hopes have not come true yeah. <laughs> over the last 10 days. Yes. You wanted Everton to get relegated. Yeah. That ain't happened. No. Nah. And then you wanted you couldn't care about Arsenal or Spurs, right? not really no yeah and you wanted liverpool to lose and, lose. and city to win uh, city you wanted liverpool to lose and city to draw or, or lose what, or whatever do like both of them to not not win not win not 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 for it to not be a glorious end winning that, end that didn't happen that didn't happen but okay city two weeks ago yeah. we hoped klopp will not win the fa cup mm. that also did not yeah. happen now So this is the only yeah, I I'm playing the odds now. <laughs> <laughs> so one in five predictions yeah. should come true. That's how good we are. Yes. <laughs> the predict- All right, yes. Next week we'll mm-hmm. have a season finale yeah. and let me see if I can find a special guest so that we can record a end of season awards kind of a thingy. Yes. Yeah. And on that note, yes. All right. All right, guys, take care and please do remember to rate us on Apple Podcast cause that will help others discover our podcast as well. Thank you. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com/survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So I mean like we'll do a random drawing of like maybe 10 people and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com/survey where you can fill out the survey. Hey, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcasts network. On Think Fast, Varun and Suchita discuss Lady Gaga's brand relaunch and Patreon's creator survey. On Press Decode, Sara Vagda and Prafula explore the mental health issues that plague our armed forces. On IVM Likes, Snehil Antariksh Abbas and Jalasmi indulge in a friends versus how I met your mother debate. On Smarter with Sid, Siddharth introduces us to the concept of dream journaling. And on Postcards from Nowhere, Utsav tells us how a 400-year-old curse, coffee and Indian Chinese food are all related. We've got some exciting news for you. IVM Podcasts has just launched its merch and our first line is out now. Head to the IVM Podcasts website and click on the shop tab to check out our first collection of t-shirts. Do follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, 
Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. And remember, if you are enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Don't forget to rate us on any platforms you are listening on. You can also check us out on YouTube. We are also doing a small listener survey to better understand how you respond to our shows and advertising on the network. We would really appreciate if you could spare a few minutes to fill it. It helps us build better shows for you. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week: SBI Life Insurance, Jupiter, a digital banking app, and Cap Gemini. Get the future you want.